So guys, what do you think? The rapture didn't happen. It's amazing. Yeah, I know. It's really amazing. Good. Now we're still here and all that. It's amazing what we have to go through. Especially things. Such things. What a day this is in. What a rabbit I'm in. Oh, it's almost like the end is love. Of the smiles of the face of the whole human race. Oh, I swear I was falling in love. Of the worlds of the wolf, of the bastard. And then more, evermore, evermore. What a day this is in. What a rabbit I did. Oh, I swear I was falling. Swear I was falling with all those I feared in love. Do, 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 da. So perhaps yesterday was a normal day. It was pretty wacky. Yeah, a, little too, a little too wacky, I think. Pretty weird. No, it's actually based on some California-based preacher that actually re had a had a TV and radio show and a children's network. Basically, he actually was spreading the word that the world was going to end up May twenty first, twenty eleven. I don't, I don't believe this. I don't believe it either. So basically, it was getting all people hyped up, billboards, ad campaign, all that. But surprisingly, it didn't happen. So I guess it's a big error. <laughs> I can't believe it happened. Well, perhaps yesterday was a normal day. It was pretty wacky. You know, no. It was quite amazing. This is amazing. So, uh, thunder, lightning, the way it looks is frightening. You better knock on wood. You gotta knock, knock, 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 knock on wood. The Elves and the Shoemaker. There was once a good shoemaker who, through a spell of bad luck, had become very poor. Finally, he had just enough leather to make one last pair of shoes. Still, it is a fine piece of leather, said his wife, as soft as butter, yet as strong as your hands. Tonight, dear wife, I will cut the leather said the shoemaker and first thing in the morning I will sew the shoes the next morning when the couple went into the workshop they were flabbergasted by what they found there on the work table stood two shoes perfectly finished not a stitch out of place but but who how sputtered the shoemaker his wife could only stare just then a dandy gentleman came into the shop what magnificent shoes please i must try them on he said the shoes fit perfectly. It was as if they had been made just for him. He was so pleased that he paid double the price. Now the shoemaker had enough money to buy leather for two more pairs of shoes. Again that evening, the shoemaker cut out the leather for the shoes and went to bed. And once again, in the morning, there were the shoes, finished. Buyers were not lacking for these either. 
and as before, they were so pleased, they paid double the price. Now the shoemaker had enough money to buy leather for four more pairs of shoes. The next morning, just as before, there were the shoes, all ready made. On and on it went. Whatever the shoemaker cut out in the evening was finished by morning. Soon the news of the splendid shoes spread throughout the town. And the shoemaker and his wife were no longer poor. One evening, not long before Christmas, as the shoemaker cut more leather for shoes, his wife spoke. Dear husband, who has made us so rich? What if we were to stay up tonight and see who comes to our shop? The shoemaker agreed. So that night, they lit a small lamp in the hall hid behind their coats and waited. As the clock struck midnight, they heard the creak of a window and the scuttle of small feet. Peeking out from behind the coats, they saw two tiny children sneak into the workshop. They were poorly shod and they wore only raggedy sacks for warmth. Elves, the shoemaker's wife whispered. The tiny elves tiptoed across the room and climbed up onto the table. Then, humming and whistling, they began to stitch and sew and hammer so quickly with their little fingers that the shoemaker and his wife could not believe their eyes. The elves did not stop until all the shoes were finished and stood lined up on the table. Sturdy riding boots, delicate slippers, feather-like dancing shoes and heavy clogs for work. Then the elves tiptoed out of the workshop, up the stairs and out the window. The next morning, the wife said, the little elves have made us rich. We must give them something in return. They run around with so little on, they must be freezing. I will make a warm dress, coat and pants, and knit them each a pair of stockings. And I shall be happy to make them each a pair of fine shoes, said the shoemaker. They went right to work. And that evening, they laid the presents on the work table. Then, like before, they hid behind the coats and waited. At midnight, the elves quietly slipped into the shop, ready for another night's work. But instead of pieces of leather, they found the beautiful presents. At first, they were too astonished to move. Then they hugged their new warm clothes and quickly put them on. When they were dressed, they leaped and bounced around the room singing, Now we're all so fine to be no more, no covers we will be. Chairs, raced around the 
raced around the shop and finally ran out the door. The click and clack of their new shoes echoed through the streets. From that time on, the little elves were not seen again. The shoemaker and his wife lived a long and happy life. So, big girl, why are you doing the cartoon? I don't like that. One hand up, guys. Well, it's like a move. So, basically. If they, so basically, if you're a little brother or a little sister actually occurred some Bible prophecy, some things. Basically, some religious all stops on the street, you know, and all that. Uh, basically, actually, a crazy guy on the street, he's weird. It was happening. I'm having some sorry, and, and Ben Girl, remember, we have lots and lots of fun, you know. Without time to go, the dash to raid, or raid, or raid, I'll be in heaven still doing this show. See you next time.